This is Top Accolade Global News Updates. I am Soy Bifa Jackridge. Citizens from Australia, Britain and Poland were among seven people working for celebrity chef Jose Andres' World Central Kitchen who were killed in an Israeli airstrike in central Gaza on Monday, the NGO said. The workers, who also included Palestinians and a dual citizen of the United States and Canada, were traveling in two armored cars, emblazoned WCK logo and another vehicle, WCK said in a statement. Despite co-coordinating movements with the Israeli Defense Force, the convoy was hit as it was leaving its there are Bala warehouse after unloading more than 100 tons of humanitarian food aid brought to Gaza by sea, WCK said. This is not only an attack against WCK, this is an attack on humanitarian organizations showing up in the most dire of situations where food is being used as a weapon of war, said Erin Gore, chief executive of World Central Kitchen. This is unforgivable. The Israeli military said it was doing a thorough review at the highest levels to understand the circumstances of what it called a tragic incident. The IDF makes extensive efforts to enable the safe delivery of humanitarian aid and has been working closely with WCK in their vital efforts to provide food and humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza, the military said. Andres, who started WCK in 2010 by sending cooks and food to to Haiti after an earthquake earlier said he was heartbroken and grieving for the families and friends of those who died. The Israeli government needs to stop this indiscriminate killing, he said on social media. It needs to stop restricting humanitarian aid, stop killing civilians and aid workers, and stop using food as a weapon. No more innocent lives lost. This starts with our shared humanity. It needs to start now. In a statement, the Islamist group Haman said the attack aimed to terrorize workers of international humanitarian agencies deterring them from their missions Ukraine struck one of Russia's biggest refineries on Tuesday with a drone 1,300 kilometers, that is 800 miles, from the front lines in Ukraine and said it had inflicted significant damage on a military target. Ukrainian drones attacked targets in Tatarstan, a highly industrialized region southeast of Moscow, in the early hours and some people were injured. Tatarstan's head Rostam Minikanov said Russian electronic warfare defense intercepted a Ukrainian drone near Tatnev's Panesko refinery, one of Russia's biggest in Nizhne Kamsmak, the RA state news agency reported. A fire broke out at the refinery that was extinguished within 20 minutes. RIA said production has not been disrupted, RIA said. Pictures from the scene indicated the drone hit the primary refinery unit, CDU-7, at the Paneko refinery. It was one of Ukraine's deepest drone attacks into Russian territory. The Tanako oil refinery is one of Russia's largest and newest. Its production capacity stands at around 360,000 barrels per day. That stands, Minikanov said that enterprises in Yelabuga and Niznekams were attacked. Two drones attacked a dormitory on the territory of the Alabuga Special Economic Zone. At least seven people were injured, Russian media reported. Unverified footage on social media showed the loud blast followed by people running for cover. A Ukrainian intelligence source said in Kyiv that significant damage had been done to a military target in Russia's Tatarstan's region in an attack using Ukrainian-made drones. Suspected Israeli warplanes bombed Iran's embassy in Syria on Monday in a strike that Iran said killed seven of its military advisors, including three senior commanders, marking a major escalation in Israel's war with its regional adversaries. Reuters reporters at the site in the Meza district of Damascus saw emergency workers clambering atop rubble of a destroyed building inside the diplomatic compound. At ascents to the main Iranian embassy building, emergency vehicles were 
parked outside. An Iranian flag hung from a pole by the debris. Iran's ambassador to Syria said the strike hit a consular building in the embassy compound and that his residence was on the top two floors. Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps said in a statement that seven Iranian military advisors died in the strike including Mohammed Riza Zahidi, a senior commander in its Quds force, which is an allied foreign espionage and paramilitary arm. Israel has long targeted Iran's military installations in Syria and those of its proxies, but Monday's attack was the first time Israel hit the vast embassy compound itself. It has ramped up those strikes in parallel with its campaign against Iran-backed Palestinian group Hamans, which ignited a Gaza war with an August 7 attack on Israel that killed about 1,200 people and took 253 hostages, according to Israeli tallies. Muslim nations including Iraq, Jordan, Oman, Pakistan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates also condemned the attack as did Russia. Earlier, Iran ambassador to Syria, Hossein Akbari, who was unarmed, told Iran and state TV that five to seven people, including diplomats, were killed and Tehran's response would be harsh. Iran and state media said Tehran believed Zahidi was the target of the attack. His deputy and another senior commander were also killed along with four others. Iran's Arabic language, Al Alam Television, said that Zahidi was a military advisor in Syria who served as the head of the Kurds force in Lebanon and Syria until 2016. OpenAI has changed the governance structure of its venture capital fund that backs AI startups, so its high-profile chief executive Sam Altman no longer owns or controls the fund. According to a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, the change documented in March 29 filing came after Altman's ownership of the OpenAI startup fund raised eyebrows for its unusual structure. While being marketed similar to a corporate venture arm, the fund was raised by Altman from outside the limited partners and he made investment decisions. Open AI has said Altman does not have financial interest in the fund despite the ownership. Axos first reported on the ownership change on Monday in a statement. A spokesperson for Open AI said the fund's initial general partner GP structure was a temporary arrangement and this change provides further clarity. The Open AI startup fund is investing $175 million raised from Open AI partners such as Microsoft, although OpenAI itself is not an investor. Control of the fund has been moved over to Ayn Hathaway, a partner at the fund since 2021, according to the filing. Altman will no longer be a general partner at the fund. OpenAI said Hathaway has overseen the fund's accelerator program and led investments in such companies as Harvey, Kuso, and Abian's Healthcare. Altman, a former president at Startup Accelerator Y Combinator, has previously drawn scrutiny on his sprawling investment interests outside OpenAI, from crypto startup WorldCoin to fusion company Helion Energy, as well as fundraising activities in the Middle East. OpenAI said an independent investigation following Altman's dramatic ouster of the company last November concluded he did no wrongdoing in terms of product safety or OpenAI's finances. <laughs> Google agreed to destroy billions of data records to settle a lawsuit claiming it secretly tracks the internet use of people who thought they were browsing privately. Terms of the settlement were filed on Monday in the Oakland, California federal court and require approval by U.S. District Judge Yuvon Gonzalez Rogas. Lawyers for the plaintiffs value their card at more than $5 billion and as high as $7.8 billion. Google is paying no damages but you Users may sue the company individually for damages. The class action began in 2020, covering millions of Google users who used private browsing since June 1, 2016. Users alleged that Google's analytic cookies and apps let the alphabet unit improperly track people who set Google's Chrome browser to incognito mood and other browsers to private browsing mood. They said they stunned Google into an unaccountable trove of information by letting it learn about their friends, favorite foods, hobbies, shopping habits, and the most intimate and potentially embarrassing things they hunt for online. Under the 
over the settlement, Google will update closures about that, about what it's collecting private, browsing, a process it has already begun. It will also let incognito users block third party cookies for five years. Google spokesman Jose Castaneda said the company was pleased to settle the lawsuit, which it also considered meritless. David Burrs, a lawyer from the plaintiff, in a statement called for the settlement, a historic step in requiring honesty and accountability from dominant technologies companies. A preliminary settlement had been reached in December, averting a scheduled February 5th, 2024 trial. Terms were not disclosed at the time. The plaintiff's lawyers plan to later seek unspecified legal fees payable by Google. Is the size of top accolade global news updates. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy Tuesday.